All right, welcome back, everybody. Once again, we are here uh, working on our hippopotamus skull. Uh, today, I want to talk a little bit about the process we're actually using. So there's really three ways to prepare uh, a skull for display. One of them is boiling. It is the fastest method, um, but we don't really have the ability to do it. If you're not really careful, it can result in cracking some of the bone and some of the teeth. The second way, and probably the one we get asked about all the time, is why don't you use those flesh-eating beetles I always see on TV? Well, the, the flesh-eating beetles work really great, but you really have to know what you're doing in order to keep them. They do kind of create a, kind of a dust and a vapor, and you really have to have like a strong HVAC system, a way to really cleanse the air. And we, again, we don't really have the facility or ability to do that here. So we're using a process called cold water maceration. And that's really just a big fancy term for soaking her in a bacteria bath. We clean that out and f refresh it and uh, clean her up every week or so, but we're really letting the bacteria do the work here. Now you might say, well, you know, last time we saw that you were putting a heater in there, so how could that be cold water maceration? Well, cold water maceration just means below boiling. So we actually want it to be as warm as possible, but anything below boiling they do consider to be cold one. So what we're doing today is we're actually starting to remove teeth. Some of the teeth have already naturally fallen out and as the material kind of decays uh, around the socket and inside a lot of the teeth will naturally fall out. Today any teeth that are very uh, loose and you can see that we can even start to wiggle some of these teeth. We are looking to pull those out because inside the socket there's a lot of material and gunk, and we really want to get clean out as much as possible before we do her final cleansing when we put her in her hydrogen peroxide bath and make her nice and white. Right up here I have some of her more impressive teeth. These are two teeth we just pulled out a few moments ago. And what's really, one of the really neat things about this is this is how much is showing. So if you, if she opened her mouth in life, you would see this much here. But the root goes way back, so what you're actually seeing, it's almost like an iceberg, where really what you're seeing is only a very tip, while two-thirds of it are inside. You can see how far deep into the skull that goes, and you can, we haven't even cleaned this one off, so you can start to see some of the gunk, and a lot of it's really just uh, dead bacteria and stuff that we need to wash out of there. Uh, of course, if you, when you think of a hippopotamus and you think of your mouth, their mouth, you think of those huge tusks, and those actually fell out very early in the process, but I have one of them right here to show you. So these are the very large tusks, and not that these aren't impressive, they're pr very large, especially if you compare them to, say, our teeth, but compared to her very large tusks, you can really see that difference. And of course, uh, they use these tusks to fight amongst each other, for defense, uh, and they are very, very formidable weapons. And we're hoping that when we pull her back out in a couple weeks, all that material that we were hoping was going to finish rotting away is going to be completely gone and we can go to the next stage of the process which will be her final cleansing before her bath. 